Vice President Schaefer? Here. Secretary Reese? Present. Treasurer Hanser? Present. Trustee McDonough? Here. Trustee Summers? Here. Trustee Whitney? Here. This is a special meeting for the board vacancy position. Um, we're going to change things up a bit because one of the candidates is not here yet. So we're going to kind of hope that that person shows up and we'll just move things around a little bit. We were initially going to do them in alphabetical order um, and then have that not reflect their order and the number that we referred them by because we didn't want them to feel awkward that you would know that the person with the last name earliest in the alphabet was number one, that type of thing, just just to give them some respect and some anonymity. And, um, but we're not gonna, that might not work out. We're gonna wait and see if he's maybe got caught in the storm or what happens. So we'll see. Um, just to kind of go over a few things about how, how this meeting will, um, we will have the candidate come in. They will sit in front of the board. We have um, selected board questions that we'll be asking the candidate. Each board member has a question that they've prepared. They have not shared those questions with any of the candidates. And so we all listen, all listen to their answers and we can take notes or whatnot. And then we will be discussing the position this evening. We will be voting on the position this evening and we will be appointing the position this evening. Meaning they will take a seat for the 6.30 meeting and they will have a vote on anything that we might be voting for. So this, um, for some reason, if we decide um, somebody comes to play and the vote is three to three because there's only six of us voting then it goes to the isd the intermediate school district then has to come in and make the decision on behalf of the district that's the law that's not it has nothing to do with us that's the mde that's how they write the law so um and that does happen sometimes so if that were to happen then we would pause it obviously have not nobody would be seated for that seventh seat tonight and then we would just wait until the ISD um, would pick someone and I would assume that that would be a you know a business day or two I don't know we'd have to call them tomorrow and, and so on and so forth. actually uh, actually right. it usually has to wait until the next regularly scheduled ISD meeting oh okay and their July meeting has already been held okay yesterday uh, and so we might have to wait until August oh okay Okay. So, um, any questions or anything? Anybody on the board have any questions about our process? Just a, a quick question. If their meeting's in August, does that interfere with the 30 days that we have to fill the role? No, because if you, if the timeline is extended, if you cannot select. Okay. The timeline gets extended another 30 days because you tried and were unable to select. Okay. Thank yeah. you. So we have 30 days to try and fill it on our own. Right. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So Angela, if you want to go get our first candidate. Welcome, Danielle. <laughs> Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm okay. Thank you. I know I know it's a little out of order, so I'm gonna breathe. <laughs> Take a deep breath, get yourself a drink of water. Um, one of the candidates didn't show up, so we're not really sure um, why, um, if it's the weather or what it is, but um, 
just to let you know, each board member is going to ask you a question, um, with the exception of myself. So um, they've already got some prepared questions, and you can just kind of go through them. We're going to take notes. Please don't be distracted by that, but just so in case we're we so that we can discuss it later, um, and then um, and then you'll have an opportunity to ask us a question. Okay. Okay. I have notes too, just in case I sure need to reset. So okay, <laughs> don't be distracted by my notes. Okay. <laughs> we know you're a note taker. Okay. Okay, go ahead, Mike. Okay, Danielle. So what quality, skills, and experiences would you bring to the Board of Education? Okay. Um, so I can go into those skills and experiences, but first let me maybe give you a little bit of my background, which also aids into that experience. So um, I am first and foremost the mother of a... Uh, incoming junior to the high school. Um, I was born and raised in Detroit. My father was a police officer. Um, my mother was a Polish immigrant. So I was a uh, first generation college graduate in my family, both sides. Um, I attended private Catholic school all my life, uh, elementary, middle. I graduated from Regina High School and then went on to the University of Detroit Mercy. Um, when I graduated from college, I took a job with EDS, and uh, my degree was in communications and business, and EDS moved me to Colorado um, as an opportunity to go through their systems engineering program uh, to become a software developer, basically. So it was then that I got into technology. It's not what I went to school for. It's not what I thought I would ever be doing. But So now I have technology, 27 years some form of technology under my belt. Um, I think it's important to note that while I was in Colorado, um, April 20th, 1999, I was having lunch with Madeline's father at the time and saw firsthand Columbine, the tragedy, um, the sirens, the first responders. And I was a community member. I was 25 years old and I was a colleague. I was a community member. I was a friend. Um, too many that had children in the school. So never in a million years could I ever have imagined being in this situation now with my daughter. Um, I moved back to Michigan and we settled in Leonard, which I never even heard about until we got here. It was the perfect distance between both families. Um, and um, after having my daughter, I did all my due diligence because I thought for sure I'd be sending my daughter to private school. Um, I met directly with Mr. McDevitt, many parents, teachers, and I was incredibly impressed by Oxford School District and its curriculum, the technology, of course, um, the teachers, the parents, and Leonard especially felt like a small private school to me. So it was an experience I was excited for for my daughter. Um, so she's still, right? Obviously, she's in, in high school. Um, professionally, I like I said, I have 27 years of professional leadership and, and te technology or industry experience in automotive, financial. Um, I am currently the vice president of software, vehicle software planning, partnerships and acquisitions, financial management and optimization, which sounds like a lot, but it's all it's all related and I think is beneficial to a role on the board. I manage, I've managed um, multi-million dollar capital R&D G&A budgets, um, anywhere from a hundred million to now over a billion dollars. I have extensive experience writing RFIs, RFQs, statements of works, working with legal and purchasing to develop contracts. Um, I know what a good contract looks like to protect the company or the organization. Um, I've managed the performance of those contracts to ensure the most value is redeemed for what we're paying for that service. Um, I've overseen employee development and upskilling, which includes planning training, online seated seminars, conferences for all of our IT employees uh, enterprise wide uh, for Stellantis. North America at the time and then globally. 
Um, this also gave me an opportunity uh, for many years to learn how to write a Michigan State grant for, for money, uh, grant funding, um, which we successfully achieved multiple years in a row, well over $300,000 for upskilling of our employees, trade skill employees. Somehow we fell into that category, so it worked and we did it. So I know the difficulties to write a grant proposal and then to operationalize it to get the money back. <laughs> um, I've been involved in university recruiting, coaching, mentoring, women's leadership programs. I'm active in um, Michigan Council of Women in Technology. Um, I continue to coach and mentor a lot of students, new college graduates, and even experienced employees at Stellantis. One, ironically, actually, I met with her yesterday. She is a graduate of Oxford High School about five years ago, and she is doing, she's a rising star, so I'm super proud of that. Um, my professional career has afforded me the opportunity to travel the world. So I've been to Italy, to France, to China, to Brazil, um, Ireland, Scotland, both for business and for pleasure, and it is a passion of mine. I've learned a lot of different things about business, um, history, art, food, it's my favorite, um, but it's also made me who I am. And then last but not least, I believe, especially over the last couple years, I've become a trusted community member. Yes, I've ruffled feathers, so let's not pretend that that hasn't happened, and it probably still will, um, but I've become a trusted community member. I, I act with integrity, I do my research, I've offered solutions, I've offered services, skills, um, and I'm committed to the district. So with all that, I think um, those are my qualifications and would be a good fit for this board. Okay. Thank you, Danielle. Uh, next question. What would you like to see changed in the district and how do you envision your role in that change? Um, so I think there's a couple things that for me would be a priority and, and I've probably, probably know them because I've probably shared with them. I mean, trust is still lost and so, coming down. Um, so I think there are a number of things that we can do as a board and a district to regain that trust. I think it's important. I, I think in order for this community, for students, for teachers, for staff, for the board, for parents to really find their way forward, we need to regain trust. And in order to regain trust, we need accountability. Um, I'd like to see us improve communication. This is something that I have talked about since day one. Um, I think that there are some really simple strategies to improve that. Knowing the audience, um, I guess that's that's another um, experience that I've had is organizational change management or people change management, really knowing your stakeholders, your audience, and understanding their readiness for change when you're preparing for something new or addressing a change when a, ch when a change has occurred um, and building communication plans, whether it's daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, annually, and really adhering to those and then always getting feedback. I think that's a gap from the board in the district that I think we could very easily overcome. Um, last but not least, I mean, obviously the board is here for the students and ultimately for the education of students. So um, we have to set challenging targets for that and I think we should continue to. However, in parallel, we have to continue looking at the readiness of the students and the staff and the teachers and the impact that they've had from the tragedy. That is not going away. And it's not just the last two years, the juniors and seniors. It's not. We know it's not. So let's, let's make sure that we address that it's not. So I think those would be my two or three priorities. Oh, the rain. I can talk louder. No. <laughs> Danielle, thank you for coming out today um, in this very public forum. 
Uh, describe your response if a parent met you at Meyer and asked for your support on a particularly hot issue. Um, well, first and foremost, I think the only thing I would do at that time is listen. Seek to understand what their perspective was, why, what the issue was, what their perspective was, what their recommendation was. I mean, obviously, the board is a team. You can't take decisions in a, in a, in a vacuum. Um, but I think acknowledging that gaining that community member's perspective is important. Um, and, and so there would be, obviously, there, there can be no commitment, but an appreciation for gathering their insight and maybe asking more questions and then bringing it back to the board. Maybe it prompts another opportunity to seek other input, similar input on that topic um, that maybe we weren't aware of. The ring is really loud. Yeah. Thanks again for coming out, Danielle. <laughs> so this one's a little bit of a mouthful, so I'll try and talk loud enough so you can hear over the uh, rain. At times, you may be caught between legitimate opposing views. There may be a difference between your personal point of view, the policy, and or the law that you're required to uphold as a trustee. How would you handle this? I imagine that's the situation that we're all in right now. So I think there's a fine balance between sharing your view as a person, as a parent, as a community member, because I'm a parent first, I have to be. Um, I think you can balance, you can balance sharing your opinion, sharing your view. I think everybody needs to because everybody's got different perspectives and you can learn from one another. I think it's important that when decisions get made or they don't get made, that the most critical point is explaining that to the community, why it was made or whatever information can be shared, why so that they understand. Um, I do think that that's a gap. I think oftentimes we could take the next step to explain a little bit better why something, why a decision was made like it was or why it's not being made. I don't know if that answered your full question, but I think educating the community on here's the topic Here's the law that we're dealing with. Here are the expectations of a trustee of the board of what we can and cannot do. I think we can, as individuals, share our opinions and recommendations, and we should. And then how we come together as a board to take that decision. All right, so I get to ask you your last question. Again, like everyone else said, thanks for coming out. You made it unscathed from the rain, so good job on that part. <laughs> so this is kind of the switcheroo here. Uh, do you have any questions for the board on the position for which you've applied for relative to the roles and responsibilities for this position? This kind of gives you an opportunity. I do. Um, so there are several new board members, and I think in the initial meetings, it there was a little bit of chaos, or at least it appeared to be, as a community, community member watching, it seemed like there was a little bit of chaos of the onboarding. I'd like to understand from at least the new board members, um, what is the plan to onboard the new board member? Typically, when you get a new job or a new assignment, you, get, you have a 30, 60, 90 day. Time is of the essence. I think it's more like 7, 14, 30 here. Um, so, what is the plan to effectively onboard the new board member, um, including ensuring that they have all the information they need to be effective immediately? I can tell you what the administration has planned. Um, one of the first things we will do is ask the newly seated board member to come in and meet with the entire cabinet. Uh, 
all of the folks who have applied have had experiences with the district. So one of the first things the cabinet will want to know is what questions do you have? What have you noticed that you want to know more about? Uh, we'll also take that opportunity of explaining the roles of, of cabinet, how we interface with the buildings. Also, there are um, several priorities that are landing on our desks right now. Uh, and we will want to make sure that the new board member is fully briefed on those particular priority areas. We've mentioned them all at public meetings, but the details go far deeper than anything we can do at a public board meeting. We'll want to make sure the new board member has those details. Um, also, if the board member is not familiar with our schools or our security systems or those kinds of things, again, each each person interviewing has a different level of intimacy with the district, mm -hmm. and we don't want to waste anyone's time. We want to be able to take them where they, 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 they believe they need to see what they haven't seen, rather than go where they're already pretty familiar. Um, the other thing that uh, we want to make sure of is that the board has an understanding of the policies, guidelines, and procedures. I do know, Danielle, that in your case, I know them well. you probably don't aren't going to need tutelage on that, uh, but some might. So we'll we'll make sure we clear that hurdle, and um, we hope to have that happen. If the person is seated tonight, then we would hope to have that happen within the next two weeks, in terms of coming in to um, be with with the cabinet, um, if if possible. So if we could get it scheduled, so it would happen very soon. Okay. And from the board view, um, I I don't know. I'll let the board members. Well, take on from since there. it was kind of directed towards the new board members, yeah. certainly there was a little bit of chaos. I mean, Vicky started the day before we did, yeah. right? And so, um, not having a superintendent in place, we had met with Anita beforehand, um, but things were a little jumbled with the holiday season and things like that. So that was one of the things when we came on the board, we're like, yeah. there needs to be an onboarding procedure. And so that's kind of what you're hearing now. So I won't talk too much about it, but that's why it was kind okay. of confusing a little bit. Yeah, I'll add a little bit to that as well. Um, I do think <clears throat> that that is an area of improvement that, that we need to work on. I know that uh, we floated the idea of, an, of a governance committee early on but decided against and um, I do still think that there are, there are plenty of opportunities that we have especially just in looking at nearby Oakland County districts where they have formal onboarding processes and procedures that we don't so um, I am looking forward to to expanding on that with fellow board members and hope that we can have something better in place over the next couple of years. Yeah, and, and to it, you know, as the, the third new person coming into it, and, and we've worked together before, and onboarding and training is always important, right? Um, I think with our stuff, understanding that we are elected, and then there's uh, a period of time where there's no onboard or anything until you take your oath of office. And so that yeah. night we took our oath of office and it was officially seated. So then it was like, okay, then the floodgates open. So not only newly elected, sat down, got in the seat, and then then there's things being presented and stuff and I'd come to previous board meetings and stuff but you know a little little overwhelming you know to be sitting on this side of it yeah. and stuff so I understand that it probably looked chaotic that that first night first couple weeks and stuff but um, I would highly recommend that whoever gets takes a seat ask questions lots of questions because there's people even the new people I feel like you know it's drinking from a fire hose but we're here to help and support each other as a team yeah and as the other new one who was not elected um, what I would say is the admin team is the absolute resource at the end of the day and being a leader that you are I envision you'll probably be a lot like me where the orientation is probably more like yeah that's cool but I would really want to know about X Y and Z because I've already done a lot of my homework um, and I am also at executive level so I want it and so what I would say is I believe that what you can get and what I got when I started was very high level functioning, answered my questions. Um, but as far as making me sit through like traditional type of onboarding, I just met with high level cabinet members and we went over things like finance policies, priorities, um, 
because decision making comes down to a group of seven, right? Yep. Um, so we can also, Heather is a great resource, so is Mary, they've been on the board for a really long time and they have a lot of history. So if you have questions, some of it's just context related, right? That not the four of us may not know per se and we lean on them a lot because Vicki's also new. So the cabinet and Vicki, Heather and Mary, I think are gonna be the pathway. But as far as formalizing a process, I think before next election is something that this board will have to take on because I imagine that if they're not re-elects that they'll probably be um, new to the board in general and varying types of uh, professional backgrounds. Okay. So. Can I ask one more question? Mm -hmm. um, what, and this could be anybody, anybody answering or maybe you all have a perspective, but what do you see as the greatest strength and biggest weakness of this current board and what do you hope the new board member to bring to you to fill that weakness or help close that gap? So, coming in new, I have to say that our backgrounds on the board so far have been in different areas, right? So I have a fairly large or long extensive in public safety, but I also IT and executive stuff. Erin, um, not to speak to her, but she's, you know, medical field and stuff. And so I think a lot of us bring unique perspectives to the conversations that we have, and I, I'm, I'm appreciative of it. As you work for a global company, so do I, I think there's nothing more exciting than meeting groups of people with different ideas and being able to have the conversation, you know, and truly listen and, and, and have input back and forth. Um, and my time thus far has been uh, filled with that. Um, sometimes, you know, it's difference of opinions and stuff, but it's, again, my perspective is only so big or so wide, and so it's nice to hear, and no one has been afraid to, you know, speak up, offer a hand and such. So I've been very appreciative of that. Um, and that kind of goes where, yeah, the onboarding was a little, you know, was challenging and stuff, but quickly once I made, you know, contact and relationships with people here, it, it eased up and made it a lot better. That's from my perspective. I'll speak to the weakness thing. The weakness is we've changed so many people that there are still things that feel like they're taking a long time um, when in reality it's the change of leadership that's occurred so many times that has delayed things. It's not that individuals at the school aren't attempting to do it. It's just hard to articulate it when you've gotten now five new board members in less than 12 months and two, super, or two superintendents since I've been on and we are anticipating another one. So I think that is the weakness, is that we still have one more change of leadership, and that is when we replace Dr. Markovich in the next um, superintendent search. The good news is after this, I hope, fingers crossed, knock on wood, all seven of the people on this table will be here to the end of 2024. So let's hope, like, there's no more changes, because that delays everything, just like it would in industry. That's the last of my questions. Okay. Well, thank you again for coming. Um, thank you for applying your experiences. Um, you have an exceptional background. You have great experience, an impressive resume, and um, we appreciate all your preparation and appreciate your honesty, and we appreciate you coming and applying. Thank you. You're um, welcome. I, I appreciate all of your time as well. I. I would be remiss if I didn't, if I didn't say, you know, I, I apply, this was, this was a tough decision for me to apply because I feel like behind the scenes I've been able to affect change. And I am worried about losing my voice on this board, but I, so I, I guess I just want to make sure that if I am selected, I can't, I won't lose my voice. It's not in me. This is me. <laughs> um, I'm doing this for for my daughter, I'm doing this for Tate and Madison and Justin and, and all the students, right? I'm doing this because I want this district to recover, find forward, and maybe naively I'm hoping that I can help push for accountability as well. And this is, this is an oppor opportunity for me to do that. So I just, I wanna be honest with that. Um, 
I will do that on the board or off the board. So, I mean, the district has my support. Um, but I will, I will continue to be vocal and push for change. That's it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. The way the process goes, Danielle, you're welcome to stay for the other two interviews. Obviously, the interviewees are not in the room when one is interviewing, but now yeah. that you've interviewed, you're welcome to stay or leave how, whatever suits you best. Okay. Thank you. Five questions. <laughs> Each board member will ask you a question, and um, we might be taking some notes, or maybe not, or whatever. So please don't be distracted by that, and then you'll have an opportunity. You're not timed or anything to answer those questions, and at the, at the end, you'll have an opportunity to ask us a question. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Shane. Thanks for coming tonight. Uh, what quality, skills, and experiences would you bring to the board of education? Uh, well, I'm. Uh, a registered nurse by trade. Um, my professional career has been about public service. I've worked in Oakland County at the Oakland County Jail for the better part of nine years. And um, I think my skills as a nurse, uh, problem solving, being able to uh, multitask. Uh, I've led a group of people um, when we traveled around the country to different jails and prisons, um, I led a group that uh, their whole job was to troubleshoot and to figure out what was going wrong at the site. Um, and so I was able to lead a multidisciplinary team uh, in that effort. And so um, organizational skills, communication, inter uh, interpersonal skills, uh, I, I, can, uh, I can work well with others uh, to say the least. Thank you for coming, Shane. Mm -hmm. Next question, what would you like to see changed in the district and how do you env envision your role in that change? Well, I think what I'd like to see change is more transparency within the district. Um, as a parent of two kids in Oxford schools, I can tell you that um, I haven't always felt that the district was very forthcoming with information. Uh, so I think, um, you know, my integrity has never been questioned. Uh, I'm an open book when it comes to um, how I feel and, and uh, where I stand on things. So uh, I think my transparency and, and my ability to uh, tell the truth and just be upfront and straightforward. Uh, thank you so much for coming out um, and talking with us today. If you could please describe your response if a parent met you at Meyer and asked for your support on a particularly hot issue. Well, I mean, I, I think my role as a school board member would be to listen to that person. I think the 
biggest opportunity most people have when it comes to communication is listening. And I think that um, that's one job I do very well. I listen. I'm an active listener. I take notes even mentally to try to figure out exactly where I would fit in in that role. Obviously, I can't promise anybody anything, and I never would. Um, but uh, I feel most people want to be heard and want to know that they've been heard and that somebody is actively listening to their concerns. And I feel that's something I can do uh, and that's something I would do for anyone. Mm -hmm. <coughs> All right, this one's a little bit of a mouthful. So. Oh boy. Yeah. At times you may be caught legitimately opposing points of view. There may be a difference between your personal point of view, the view of the policy, and then the law that you're required to uphold as a trustee. How would you handle that? Well, I think that happens every day at my job. Uh, as a nurse, I may have personal feelings about a certain procedure or certain medication that a patient can have, but it's my job. It's it's priority. It's policy and procedure, so I will follow it um, as it's written. And, uh, you know, my personal feelings, I, I'm allowed, just like any other person, to feel any way that I want to about a topic. But if there's a policy and procedure written and that's, that's the way we have to go, then that is the way I will go. I don't break policy and procedure. Hey Shane, so now is your opportunity. Uh, do you have any questions for the board for the position to which you're applying for relative to the role and the responsibilities of this position? I sure do. If you don't mind, I should have a couple written down. Yeah. So one of them you guys kind of touched on with one of your questions, which I thought was interesting. Um, For any of you, uh, has it ever been difficult to serve on the board, and probably you'll laugh internally at this question, difficult to serve on the board and be out in public with your family, be at a restaurant, uh, be at a school event, and you're confronted by somebody who's upset or angry, and how did you handle that? So prior to coming on the board, um, I, I work at the police department here in town as a reserve police officer. I've been doing it for 25 years. So quite regularly find myself in situations, um, even more so now being on the board, where people see me, glare at me across the way at Red Naps, um, make comments and stuff. Um, just keep your composure. Um, very, very similar, you know, you work in the jail, so I'm sure you get comments slung to you all the time on different things and, and such. Um, but before taking this position, I had a very frank conversation with my wife and my kids of what this meant and what does it mean and it's not that dad's in charge of the schools or that you know I can go and 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 take care of bullying individually or and stuff like that and they understand that but they also understand the other other job that I do as well and stuff um, so a lot of times they'll just look at me and see my reaction and then that gives me an opportunity to show them how to appropriately behave and how to respond and be an adult about it and and respect other people's to your point feelings and thoughts and, and stuff so yes there are times um, but, you know, I, I think we're all adults here in, in our professional careers. We know how to do and handle those things appropriately. Personally, I've never had a bad interaction with anyone in Oxford. Um, I feel very fortunate to live in this town because the people are just more or less curious, and that's the lens you need to look through. Um, some of them may have different tones of voice. Um, I personally, you know, we all have our own experiences being here during COVID. Those of us who had kids in the high school have very unique experiences. Um, but I believe that everyone just comes with a lens of curiosity. And if you lead with that, you tend to have more positive conversations. Um, may not agree with everyone, and that's okay. Um, that's part of being a leader. And that's the courage of being a leader, is being okay to have different opinions between community members, faculty and staff, and your, your co-board members but talking about it in a respectful manner is what everybody deserves, whether it's opposing or not. So personally, not had a bad experience with Good. anyone in town. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you for the question. Um, I have I've had similar experience to Aaron, and I am grateful that people do seek me out to share their thoughts and to share their opinions. I I also I never commit to anything, and and I remind people that I will share the information that they have, um, and that I'm a board part of the board of seven. And I, I don't, as a board member, I don't have any individual authority, but I appreciate people seeking me out and sharing things with me. Um, I think it's really helpful. Thanks. Okay. All right. Um, I won't take up too much more of your time. I just have a couple more questions. Um, how do you guys, uh, as a board, specifically interact with the superintendent? I guess I think I'll speak to this um, as one of the senior people on the board. So the superintendent is our only employee. You know, we don't have any authority over cabinet. We do not attend their meetings. We don't have anything to do with day-to-day -day business of the school. That is the superintendent's job. That's her role is to run the district. Our job is to oversee the superintendent. So she or he would report to us. So they're our only employee. So, um, you know, that's, I think that's a confusing part to a lot of people in the community. Mm -hmm. You know, they think that we have a lot of hands in the day-to-day -day functions of buildings and how long recess is. <laughs> you know, the list goes on and on and on, and it really, you know, that, that's really not our job. So we have a, um, a financial responsibility to the district to make sure that we are on budget and to make sure that we are on task for all of that. We have a, a responsibility to the policies and procedures, and we have a responsibility to hold the superintendent accountable. So that's really what our role is. Um, so our interactions with her, um, the board president probably has more, uh, a little bit more interaction on a weekly basis, but um, you know she runs the district, and um, you know before her it was Ken or whatever. They run the district, and then there's usually updates on like a Friday basis. There's no voting, there's no discussions, there's none of that. Um, she might do it in an email form, ba 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 ba, like bullets of kind of what's going on. Hmm. You know, what's going on in HR, you know, just in general. Right. We don't get told specifics about staff or personnel issues or anything like that. So hmm. it's, it's very generalized, um, kind of by department, how curriculum is doing, how HR is doing, what's going on in PR, things like that. Obviously, the last couple of years, there's been um, some more intimate conversations that have had to happen, um, and those are kind of on a case-by-case -case basis, but that's really our relationship. I would say, too, going back to probably your previous question is, you know, when you hear things or you're talking to community members, there's always an open door where you're allowed to call her to clarify points, you know, and especially coming on... Um, in the middle of an election, like not an election cycle, but through the middle, um, there's a lot that sometimes, and you know, you you'll learn through the community that maybe wasn't shared by the superintendent, and you need to get contextual background so you can fully understand. That door is always open to call. What we can't do is the seven of us have conversations all together, um, so it's a little. It's weird being on a public board, to be honest. It feels super ineffective, actually. Um, but that's the law, and so we have to follow it. So mm -hmm. she's the person that we go to for some of that information. So the relationship is great, and any time I hear anything, you know, if I hear it once, meh, maybe I don't think it's a huge deal. I hear it twice, I call her, you know, kind of thing, okay. just to clarify. Uh, also, I, I appreciate the fact that the seven board members have realized that for an organization to run one CEO is typically better than seven <laughs> CEOs. Um, you can imagine if a hospital system was, or your, your practice was run. So, so that's important for consistency, stability, and for accountability. Um, if everybody's running it, who do you hold accountable? Um, however, saying that, I believe in very open communication, not on things that are prohibited from being communicated, but those things that can be communicated. And when a board member asks a question, all seven board members get the answer. Um, we try to keep everybody informed, uh, especially around agenda items. Um, 
we, we have kind of a, an ask in place that you get the agenda on Thursday and you ask your questions no later than Sunday night so that we can then be prepared to answer the questions and the board meeting is not a waste of time because we don't even know w what information you wanted to have in order to make a decision. So we have a few little rules between us like that that helps the ship say, sail more smoothly. And um, I would say that at this point in time, I, you know, I've been in a superintendent in a lot of places for a lot of years, and um, I feel the board superintendent relationship here is running very smoothly. Very good. Great. I just have one last question. Okay. Um, something you all alluded to um, is that not everybody's going to agree on everything, right? You all are going to have personal feelings about certain topics, and again, that's perfectly normal. So how do you as a board handle things? You know, what tools do you use or how do you settle disputes amongst yourselves if four of you are one way and three are the other? How do you guys effectively communicate to come to a general consensus? So all communication has to be done in the public. Mm -hmm. um, so with that being said, we've been fortunate that some of the decisions we've had to make have been, I think, and if you've been watching board meetings, we're able to discuss them with each other quite politely. Um, I think there'll probably definitely be times where we have disagreements, but I think it's about making sure that we respect each other in our positions with each other. Um, at the end of the day, the way the board works is once there's a vote, it doesn't matter your personal opinion, you have to uphold that um, as a board member. So it's not, um, there are policies against going on social media and then kind of making comments. Um, as you may have noticed during election, Amanda was very active on social media, you know, but now she's not, and that's because there's a policy for it. So whether or not Amanda agrees fundamentally with the decision that we made, she's respected the rest of us enough not to go out and put it on Facebook, et cetera. Um, not to pick on you, sorry. <laughs> we all know you're very active. Um, so I, I, I think that's probably the high level question. Um, again, we've been fortunate with some of the decisions we've made have been very, um, like curriculum based and stuff like that, we haven't had to make a very tumultuous decision. And I think we have a good diversity of board members who ask mm -hmm. good questions, to be honest, really great questions, um, both on the agenda items and then here in public meeting. You know, uh, we got an engineer, we have an IT guy, you know, we got Mary who works at like a million different jobs and knows a lot of different things. You know, I'm in healthcare, Amanda's in marketing. So we have very different opinions on things. And I think that diversity is healthy for us too. Right. And, uh, and I'll go. Um, and then also, like she mentioned, a lot of different backgrounds up here. And so as we can't behind the scenes, like coordinate all seven of us talking, but I'll, I'll, if there's an IT, some, some issue that I'm, I'll ask James, I'm like, do you, what experience do you have with this? Or, you know, and so we, we have kind of an open communication. I've asked Heather clarification questions and things like that. So we just talk through, I just ask questions. I don't remember if it was, before it might have been with, with the previous um, interviewee, but uh, but just ask questions and kind of go that that route. And we haven't had any um, like like it hasn't come to blows at any time. Mm -hmm. um, we just kind of ask questions and ask each other how how we're feeling and how to work things out. But then it comes down to the the, the four votes take takes the majority, right? Anything well, else? No, that is it. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you very mm -hmm. much for coming. Yes. Do you want to talk to us? Welcome to stay. Uh, oh, yeah. um, you've been interviewed, so you're welcome to stay. Mm -hmm. We have one more interview, and then the board will do a vote and um, make a selection and seat the new board member. Okay, great.
a little easier to hear this time. Okay. So we're going to... Um, you can hear me? I can hear you fine. Okay. I'm yep. pretty loud. So. Yep. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so there's going to be five board questions. Okay. Each board member, with the exception of myself, are going to ask you a question. Okay. So please don't be distracted if we take some notes. Some people are note takers and some people okay. aren't. Me too. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, and, and then we'll, you'll have an opportunity to ask a question or some questions yourself. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. Okay, Colleen, thanks again for coming. You're welcome. Um, what quality skills and experiences would you bring to the Board of Education? Um, well, you know, I've been around a long time. <laughs> um, I had the privilege of serving on the board for many years. Um, so I, I think that that's always a good thing when you have some opportunity to serve. Um, I did participate in two superintendent um, searches, and I think that as a board you guys will have to do that uh, in the near future. Um, sadly, I had to be part of a team that fired a superintendent, um, and that was a pretty stressful time on the board. Um, I think that I am pretty even-tempered. I have, I like to think I have good judgment. Um, I know what it takes to be part of a team and be willing to collaborate. Um, I have a sincere interest in public education. Um, I have three daughters who are all in public education. They're sitting behind me somewhere. Um, I like to think that I focus on what's best for Oxford and their families um, and, you know, what helps students, uh, teachers teach and students learn. So. Thank you, Colleen, for coming. You're welcome. Next question is, what would you like to see changed in the district, and how do you envision your role in that change? What would I like to see changed? Hmm. You know, sitting in the public, it's a little different than sitting as a, as a board member. Um, I, I can't say, like, off the top of my head, this is what I want changed. Um, I, don't, I don't have a particular agenda, so to speak. I don't have something that I would come on the board to to change and do. Um, I, you know, as a board member, you, you sit together, you're part of a team, you're a team of seven plus the superintendent. That's how you work together. Um, and that's kind of what I would do, is to try to see what, you know, you, you have to follow the law, you have to follow the policies. So those would be, you know, the direction that I would go. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming, Colleen. You're welcome. Um, if you would please describe your response if a parent met you at Meyer and asked for your support on a particularly hot issue. Oh, gosh. Um, hmm. Well, I think my, I, I would listen, and um, I, I would never commit to supporting something. Um, but I think it's really important that, you know, as as an elected person that you listen to people. Um, and what would I do? I think I would tell them that, um, you know, as, a, as one person, I have no power. As you sit, you know, when you sit at the board table, that's where your power is. Um, and that I would explain to them, here's the, the process of how you get things done. You know, you, have you, have you talked to your child's teacher? Have you gone to the principal? Have you talked to the administration? Have you talked to the superintendent? Then you come to the board with your concerns. Um, but I, I would never, you know, but I think it's important that we listen and, and you know, read emails and, you know, let people vent to the board. Mm -hmm. All right, Colleen, thanks again for coming and um, offering yourself to another year of service should you get elected um, tonight. Thanks, Erin. Um, this is a little bit of a mouthful, and I keep tripping over it, so okay. I'm going to apologize in advance. Like, um, so at times you may be caught between legitimately opposing views, points of view. There may be a difference between your personal point of view and the view of the policy or the law that you're required to uphold as a trustee. How would you handle that? Well, you always have to follow the law. <laughs> that's, that's easy. Um, and, and I, I probably would have, I, I'm sure, you know, of course the first thing that comes to my mind is the, 
wonderful time that we just got through with masks and COVID. And um, did I personally like the way the governor was handling it? No. Did I like the way the um, health department was handling it? No. Would I have wanted the school to violate those and risk being fined? I don't think that would be a good use of taxpayer dollars. And I wouldn't want the kids to have to once again be shut down, you know, their schools to be shut down. So I think even if it was my personal view, I would have to, you know, you have to side with the law and what the policy is. And, um, yeah, you know, and, and then after you vote as a board, even if I thought, oh, yeah, this, I just don't like this. I would still have to support the board because that would be that's how you you know move forward as a team. Mm -hmm. All right, so now it's your chance. Uh, do you have any questions for the board for the position that you're applying for relative to the role and responsibilities? Hmm. You know, something I've thought about. Um, and I, I was going to talk to Vicki about it, and I just didn't, and then this opportunity came up. Um, I think um, the, you guys, as a board, should give some thought to, and it's been my past experience, um, when you have a long meeting and then you go into closed session, I personally think nobody does great thinking, processing at 930 at night. Everybody's worked all day, and then you go into closed session. In the past, there have been times that on boards that I've sat on that we've added an extra meeting. Um, it is more work for the board because now you've got another meeting, um, more family time that it cuts into, but I think it's um, fiscally more responsible because, you know, if I know the meetings I've been to, oftentimes the attorneys are sitting here for a couple hours before you guys go into closed session. Um, and it would be more fiscally responsible, and I just think the board does I, th I think we all do better and clearer thinking earlier in the evening. So that, that would be something I would ask the board to consider. But that's it. I, I kind of know what the board's about. Um, I would probably do a lot of listening and try to be part of the team that you guys are creating and go from there. Okay, I had to sit for a long time for those other people, so I hope this <laughs> I hope I answered some of your questions. Yes, yeah, thank you very much. You You're did, welcome. Colleen, and and you are welcome to join the audience now that all oh, of the perfect. interviewing is uh, okay. is over. Okay, thanks. All right, given that no one needs a break, I have um, uh, filled out here just some little voting uh, sheets for you, and um, I'll just pass them this way. You each get one, even though there's a lot more. Everybody gets to vote once. Um, what you'll see on the sheets are the candidates listing, and the candidates have been assigned a number that is not a number in the order in which they interviewed. Um, when you cast your vote, you cast it for one candidate. Um, we're going to give you time to review the resumes that were submitted, although I know you've all read them ahead of time. Uh, you have some notes, you have some thinking time, and when I look around and you all seem to be ready to cast a vote, if it's uh, all right with Heather, I'll tally them here on my sheet of paper, because Heather gets to vote. And, um, but do vote by number, not by name. Okay, and you'll see uh, the, the order, I transposed the order, so you have to kind of look at what I've written in there because our interviewing order got changed. Any questions? Okay.
don't have to take it on paper. I'm just pointing out to you what the name of the candidate. Oh, okay. That's you don't need to, I'm sorry. I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I put out the, I put the paper tally together so you would see the numbers of the candidates, but you will need to vote out loud. Okay. And when I see everybody ready, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. Or, or Heather will call for the vote. I don't have a right to call for the vote, I don't think. And then I know there were more papers than uh, trustees up here, but I have two papers and one is not edited. Oh. So just make sure everybody's is edited. There's a handwritten number on it. Is that correct? Oh, yes. I don't, I didn't change them all. Thank you, Mike. I'm so glad we have an engineer on the board. <laughs> Thank you. Do you want to call the, the, you want the secretary to call the roll for the sure. votes? You want me to call more? Mm -hmm. So you're going to tally? I'll tally. I'll tally as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, right. I don't tally so well. <laughs> Vice President Schaefer. Or I guess President Schaefer. Now that happens next meeting. Yeah. Candidate number one. Uh, secretary Reese, candidate number one. Treasurer Hanser. Number one. Trustee McDonough. Candidate two. Trustee Summers. Number one. Trustee Whitney. Number two. Okay. Candidate number one. Can you want me to make the motion? Yeah. Yep. All right. Move to approve the appointment of Colleen Schultz. 
to complete the 2024 term of the school board ending December 31st, 2024. Support? Discussion? Trustee Whitney. Yes. Trustee Summers. Yes. Trustee McDonough. Yes. Uh, Treasurer Hanser. Yes. Uh, Secretary Reese. Yes. And Vice President Schaefer. Yes. Well, at this point, I thank everyone, and I know the board thanks everyone for applying. Hopefully, um, Trustee Schultz is ready to take an oath of office and assume her, her seat um, for probably, what, the third or fourth time in her, in her uh, career. Um, and I don't know if the, Angela would administer the oath now, unless yeah. there's anything nope. else the board That's wants to discuss. Before. Okay. Angela so, Colleen, come on up. Support the Constitution of the United States. And I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of this state. And the Constitution of this state. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office as a member of the Board of Education. Of the office as a member of the Board of Education of Oxford Community Schools in Oakland and Lapeer Counties, Michigan. Of Oxford Community Schools in Oakland and Lapeer Counties, Michigan. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. For your vote. <laughs> and again, we just wanted to thank um, all the candidates, both Danielle and Shane. They had a uh, great experiences as well, and we just wanted to thank everybody for coming and preparing and um, and submitting their interest in supporting our district. So with that, I will close this meeting. Oh, unscheduled audience participation? Okay. So this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>